Hi guys, it's Lurie, and this video today is gonna help you out if you find that you have skipped or popping, breaking stitches when you're sewing knits. So, I had this situation happen to me. I was doing some alterations and I was happily sewing along and I noticed that my stitches began to skip like this. Um, I realized something that I did not change my needle before I started stitching. It didn't happen right away, but after a while, I started to see those crazy skip stitches. Um, a couple of things were going on. My needle was old, and um, I used it before, and it was also um, not a ballpoint needle. It was your standard size 14 needle. Um, and when I realized that, I took it out, I put in a ballpoint needle, and kept sewing, and it was perfectly fine. Okay, so here is my setup today. I have standard thread um, in the machine. I also have standard thread in the bobbin. I have, for needles, I have these brand new, never been used um, standard needle. I have the 9014 um, or just 14. Guys, that 90 over 14 deal, um, the 90 is the number on top. Those are European sizes. The number on the bottom um, is US sizes and it means the same needle, the same thing. Um, so I have a standard size 14 needle, fresh needle inside of the sewing machine. So I'm going to start with um, just my average size straight stitch. And I'm starting to see skip stitches already um, like I said before skip stitches don't happen right away but eventually you'll start to see them and eventually they will get worse and worse um, and then you can see it here from the back as well so this is a brand new needle but it's a standard needle um, when you sew with the knits um, it's best to use a ballpoint needle or an actual jersey needle for this reason right here Okay, so if you've been seeing skip stitches, um, try changing your needle. Now, if you don't have a serger and you use your zigzag, which is a very common stitch to use if you don't have a serger machine, you absolutely can use the zigzag. Um, if you use the zigzag and you have the wrong needle, well, this is what you have. Let's see. you get skipped stitches. Okay, now let's go ahead and change these things up. Let's take this needle out. I'm gonna change one thing at a time. I'm gonna take this needle out, this brand new standard size needle, and I'm gonna put in this ballpoint needle, size 14. And let's see if I get the same situation. So the only thing I've changed is the needle. All of my threads are the same. Let's go to this side of this sample piece. And let's start with that straight stitch.
Okay, and there it is. Not a single skipped stitch at all. Looks beautiful. And now let's take a look at a zigzag. It's running through there and let's go ahead and switch it up to different size and one more size it's really hard to sew because they're so tiny Okay, so under the perfect conditions, this is what um, this looks like with the ballpoint needle. Um, and the only problem with using a um, straight stitch with your ballpoint needle is this right here. It doesn't take long before that snaps and breaks. If you've ever sewn anything in knit and you put it on and you started hearing that little snapping and breaking um, throughout your garment, here's the reason. This thread has absolutely no give at all whatsoever. This is very stretchy, this is not, and the resistance is just gonna make it break. So that is where the Elo Flex thread comes in. So let's put it on, we'll leave the ballpoint needle on and we'll see the difference with the Elo Flex thread. Okay, I've changed out my thread i have now white elo flex thread on soft it's kind of silky i mean even in your hand you can feel how it gives just a little bit so let's just sew a straight stitch So this is the Elo Flex thread, and I'm gonna give it a tug. And I'm pulling quite a bit, and finally it broke. Um, so that was a lot of tugging before it actually broke. And you see how the threads are able to move with the fabric a little bit more. So this isn't elastic, you know, it's not going to not break at some point, it will. Um, so for that reason, I do not suggest using um, Eloflex thread on the straight stitch alone for sewing swimsuits, for sewing dancewear, things like that. Um, but if you are making a t-shirt, if you're making um, a knit dress or just some casual clothing, um, or even if you're sewing stretch velvet, then use this thread. It's gonna give you a little extra when you're actually putting on the garment and you're stretching your arms into it. You're not gonna start feeling that popping around the waist um, or in the armholes or anywhere or in your darts because your thread is not giving with the fabric, okay? Um, now, Let's try this zigzag. Okay. So here it is, and with the zigzag, I can get even more pull and more stretch with the um, with the Eloflex thread. Um, if you were doing things like um, underwear, um, maybe panties, or if you were doing um, leggings, if you're doing more 
uh, form-fitting stretchy materials if you're sewing more form-fitting stretchy garments um, and you use a zigzag with the elo flex thread um, you'll be in good shape you can do that all right guys that is it for this video thank you so much for watching if you are not already subscribed please go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell so you know when i upload my next video um i want to give all you guys a huge huge thank you i'm going to take a second here to give you a huge thank you for all who have subscribed already um when i made my first video in november of last year um i think i had two or three subscribers i mean i wasn't trying to have subscribers but now that there is almost 300 of you I'm completely blown away and I'm super thankful so if you haven't already joined uh, the crew go ahead and hit that subscribe button um, ring the bell give this video a thumbs up share it with someone who may need this information um, and then leave a comment too thanks you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time